Hello, everyone! Ah! Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Page Fire! <laughs> it's 2 a.m. <laughs> and that's why we're so loud in this apartment complex. We figured that we've talked a lot about how we would reboot stuff, but we haven't really talked about making our own movies. Problem is, we don't have any ideas. Okay. So we're gonna take your word salad box. Yes. <laughs> word salad. And we're gonna, we're each gonna pick a word, like so. Yes. And you pick a movie, and we'll just do this for a little bit. Pick one. Wishes. Transportation. The transportation wishes. Transportation wishes. Okay. What is this movie going to be about? It's about a guy trying to ride the transport, but he keeps taking the wrong one. He keeps wishing, God damn it, can't I take the right one? I have another idea for yes. this. Okay, so it's a kid's adventure movie. Mm -hmm. And he gets, or she, gets like a magical ticket. Mm -hmm. Can take them anywhere they want, and they desperately want to get away from their parents. <laughs> so we have a very basic, like, kind of runaway story where he finds out, or she finds out at the end that, oh no, my true home is with my parents. Although, you know, I want to subvert that with the parents are terrible people. She's wishing for transportation to her favorite locations and realize this, those locations are not that great. Even though it's her wish to, wish to go there, she didn't wish for a great location. Only the location. She wishes for Candyland and the, the land is rotting. No one has teeth. <laughs> and so, it's just a shithole. <laughs> okay, uh, but this ticket also we got a conflict in the movie, and the conflict is clearly the parents trying to find her. So I will say, it only goes to real places, but only real places close by, and the police are trying to find her to bring her back to her abusive family. Because I want the moral of the story to be, if your parents suck, get the fuck away from them. And they hire a specialist, the conductor. The conductor is the one that takes tickets, and he's just given the task, stop this girl. And at the end, uh, of course, she gets reunited with her parents, and the conductor sees how bad they are. And Plot twist: the conductor is her father. Fuck that. <laughs> no, it's a real biological father who's a dick. Yeah. The conductor instead, like, takes her away from these abusive parents and put her into foster care, and later adopts her. Showing that adoptive parents can be much better because there is an overwhelming amount of people who are like, oh, my real parents are so much better. There are so many foster parents are shit kind of stories, which only Mat Matilda kind of touches on, actually, actually now yeah. that I think about it. So we need more real parents are not your best parents kind of stories. Yes, and, and I have experienced that someone has been taken away from their mother and she was way happier with her mother. So, trust me, I know that isn't always the case, and I know that getting into ch getting adopted can be shitty, but there are so many stories about um, foster homes being terrible, and when you get to your parents, that's like, hooray, everything solves itself. So I definitely think we need more stories oh, yeah. that are more positive towards that, which is why I kind of hate the Samurai Jack reboot, like the last episode, wouldn't it have been so much better if she found out that no, Samurai Jack is a much better like father figure than Aku? Sort of like your biological parent doesn't necessarily 100% reflect who you should stand by. Yeah. You hear that, Samurai Jack creators? <laughs> you had a great opportunity and you fucking missed it. Do, we, do you have more ideas for locations she's gonna go to? Our main I, character? I, I mean, Besides Candyland rotting teeth. <laughs> I think we're gonna drop Candyland and just go to real places. She <laughs> just wanna go away, and that's her wish. <laughs> okay. Fitting in with the story that I forgot the name of. <laughs> Transportation wishes. Transportation wishes, yeah. We might have to workshop that idea, <laughs> or the name, but that's basically where the idea springs yeah. from. And by the way, all the ideas we come up with are royalty free. Yeah, you're uh, allowed to take the ideas and do whatever you want with them. If, if there's any filmmakers out there watching this fat fucking chance, <laughs> but, 
you know, you have our blessing to do with our dumb ideas as you please. Next wish. <laughs> yes. Don't smack Sonic. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna add Sonic here. No! <laughs> this Slap this time first. I'm gonna use that Sonic. <laughs> Not that Sonic. Yes, that Sonic. <laughs> I hate that Sonic. Is a name, Warren. Wanted Warren! <laughs> <laughs> Wanted Warren! Wanted Warren! Do you have any plot? I have a plot for this. Go ahead. It's an action comedy about a guy named Warren. And he's wanted. And he's wanted for a crime he didn't commit. <laughs> so, the entire movie is based around him trying to, uh, trying to evade the cops and prove his innocence. <laughs> But it's a slapstick! <laughs> so it's like an old-timey Chaplin-esque movie. Yeah. But done in modern times, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it can actually be like death, so it's consequential, but it's extra hilarious, so... It's like dark humor amped up. <laughs> yeah. It can't be like realistic slapstick. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it becomes a splatter, basically. <laughs> it's still like, boing, but he lost an eye. <laughs> <laughs> like hitting someone with a frying pan, like it's a cartoon sound effect, but like half his, half his skull caves in. And one of the policemen has a running joke where he keeps losing body parts and his partner keeps making puns at him, like he loses an eye, like, uh, what? <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> he loses like all his front teeth. <laughs> That's one way to take a bite out of crime. <laughs> he loses an arm. Like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he loses an arm, like. Do you need a... Don't say it! Do you need a... Don't say it! And you're next! <laughs> <laughs> and just brings out a gun and shoots him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another running joke we have with Warren. They were saying like, Hey Warren, aren't you wanted? I didn't do it. But you're on the wanted poster. <laughs> like he keeps coming up with cases like, No, I didn't do it. I wasn't there that day. But you're on the poster. Like, why does the crime is guilty of? I think we will never know. <laughs> That's better than just, you know, murder. Like, yeah, it, that, that isn't important what he is, what he is uh, not guilty of. You can, the, the, the only thing is that, you know, how is it gonna end, though? Warren dies. I have a better one. Yes? Warren goes to jail. <laughs> And then not for the crime. Like, he is backed up in a corner and he starts shooting down cops. And then someone says, wait, wait, Warren, Warren, we know you didn't do it. You, you did? Yeah. And he finally relaxes. The cops come and cuff him and go oh, like, wait, wait, you said I didn't do it. And they go, well, you killed all these cops. That's still, you know, murder. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's in an electric chair. <laughs> Just boom. Did that ending shock you? You're getting it, Warren. <laughs> yeah, that's, please make that movie. If someone could make that movie work, I would be so fucking thrilled. Oh yeah. Again, workshop the ideas and stuff, but yeah, all of this is commercial. <laughs> yeah. Word salad. You know why it's called word salad? No, there's because one word. Because it's health, healthy for you. It, it would drop in front of you. <laughs> you fool. Little. Masterpiece. Little masterpiece. There's already like Amadeus, it already exists, so we can't. <laughs> Dang. Have, like, little mean young. Oh! Hmm? Okay! Okay! <laughs> this is gonna be like a really weird avant garde movie. I mean, the name alone is not very weird, so yeah. Little Masterpiece is a movie about a guy that makes incredibly famous paintings, but they're all really small. <laughs> yeah, I like it so far. And he places them randomly around in the city. And he says that whoever finds them can keep it and sell it. His last masterpiece that has been valued the most and he has died. People are trying to find it and he follows a couple of characters. <laughs> and it's kind of an anthology movie. Oh yeah, I love like that. And it just follows all of these little characters as they try to find it. And they find something else. Yes. Oh, the, the, it wasn't the destination, it was the journey. <laughs> or, you know, I murdered ten people to get here, and for what? I spilled blood on the painting. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really ironic twist. Yeah, I mean, one something. of them's not valuable anymore. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Like, half anthology movie that is split but slowly connects together like Pulp Fiction. 
Or like uh, Rat Race, yeah. if you remember that I movie. haven't seen Rat Race. Huh. I was on the Netflix ones, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. I'll check it out one day. It has Smash Mouth. Yay! <laughs> The thrill. No, Little Masterpieces. I think that can be a really fun movie. <laughs> oh yeah. And you can literally do anything because the plot is so simple. You can literally do any side plot you want. And everyone has magnifying glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only one where the... Uh, this is a free idea, please use it. If that's the only thing that really... You have to do that. Everyone has magnifying glasses. Yes. <laughs> it takes place during... Uh, the 19... 1982. 1982 New York, like <laughs> yes. before New York got uh, re like an overhaul. <laughs> so it's like seedy and dark and a bit noir-esque, but also a bit like... Or we could, we could set it in the 70s, we, oh, yeah. then we have noir, black exploitation. Yeah! We have a bunch of things we can do and we can the also The year is off back. now. <laughs> yeah, we can do a... Bakshi kind of thing, which is why I like the 70s. Oh, yeah. So it can be like animation coupled together with real life. <laughs> so we can just take it. So filmmakers just put a lot of things in the, from the 70s in it and just smash those genres together, <laughs> see how they work. Oh, yeah. Make that movie. Yeah. And also because it's a bit of an artsy movie, you can bring in magic. Yeah, why the fuck not? It can be time travelers trying to find out what happened to the painting. <laughs> Make it extra convoluted. It's every genre movie. Why not, right? Plot twist turns out the people from the future took it. <laughs> or something. No, have, have your own fun with it. Revolution. I uh, already like it. Master. Revolution Master. Revolution Master. This is going to be a 90s. A <laughs> uh, hacker film. Oh yeah. But he hacks very oddly. He's the fastest hacker, but not in the way you think it is. He uses a dance dance revolution dance pad for hacking. <laughs> and somehow he hacks faster than anyone with a keyboard. He just dances all the codes in and somehow manages to hack into the Pentagon. <laughs> dance my way into the White House. But why does he do it? Why does he try to hack? The Pentagon with a dance pad. Clearly, the dance pad is just there so you can put in some cool, like, songs and just make it ridiculous when you see all the code go by while he's <laughs> dancing. He's dancing all the 13 codes in possible directions! Gnarly, dude! <laughs> he can type the word radical faster than anyone with a keyboard. I've seen him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Motivation. Why? The government's trying to ban dancing because it's dangerous. It didn't have a cause till now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just proving them dancing can lead to victory, but accidentally leads to anarchism. Uh, also, uh, because this is a 90s movie, there has to be like a contest. Like a, he ha oh, yeah, yeah. He, he wants to hack the government and stop oppression and uh, stop but he doesn't all wanna, of that. He doesn't want to miss the dance contest! <laughs> Dang it! So the great finale is him both winning the dance contest on the Dance Dance Revolution <laughs> match yeah. and hacking the government at the same time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we make masterpieces? <laughs> Why do people not make these masterpieces before we come up with them? Good point. <laughs> this is very fun, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Hide. Clockwork. <laughs> High Clockwork. The opposite of a heist film. <laughs> High Clockwork is a story about a bank robbery, mm -hmm. and the main character is someone who's trying to hide the thing. Like, a clockwork that is incredibly valuable, like one of those death clocks. Oh, oh yeah. it's set in the future. Oh. A uh, steampunk future. Oh. And there is the last death clock. Everyone, all the others have been destroyed. And there's one left, and it's in kind of a vault, not necessarily a bank, and it is about one security guy trying to hold off like seven bank robbers with each of their own personality. Yeah. The way this... It's Die Hard. <laughs> yeah. Basically, but Art Deco. And the thing is that every, every third day they have to move the clock to a random vault in the building. 
and it gets so confusing, no one knows where you usually gets put next. So every security guard is confused, except the one guy who works that day. So the robbers have to randomly guess who knows the right door. Okay, uh, I, I kind of like the idea too that he uh, ha he actually knows that it's hidden, like like in a potted plant, or he has moved <laughs> it from there. Yeah, they never hide it actually in the wall. They put it in random no, places. He did. Yeah, yeah. He, he found it by accident and just, uh, <laughs> while they were searching and he just hid it in a pot of plant and just threw some dirt over it. <laughs> and someone managed to defeat them and they're like, it's too late, they got it! And he goes, no, it isn't too late. <laughs> and he shows that it's there. <laughs> the villain's motivation is obviously money. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it's gotta be like a very weird sci-fi setting with a lot of like cool things. Like, you can... Uh, before one of the villains shoots a gun, you can kind of see how the clockwork works, like... Like... <laughs> so, so it's a very technical movie that kind of shows how it's done. So a lot of steampunk uh, co cosplayers can go like, Ooh, I could actually make that. But the clock itself is just a normal clock, no supernatural element. Yeah. It doesn't like... It dings when someone's five seconds from the death door. No, it doesn't. It's, it's <laughs> just like one of those rare death clocks that were painted with mercury, which which was the same kind of material that uh, was used on hatting, which hats, which was yeah, it was basically the same glue that made hats. Hence, why Matt is a hatter, and <laughs> it's called the death clock because a lot of people died making it because they mixed gold with that liquid. Uh, okay. So that's why. It is the unethical, like, oh, it's thematic as well. Like, it it also illustrates the unethical nature of capitalism <laughs> by the fact that they have created the watch was created with no well-being for the worker being in consideration, and it's also something they are trying to take, trying to get that back in a sort of sense. That they have no well-being for others either. They want it to make money, which is unethical. Make it. Make it, anarchists. One more. I, I'm, I'm going as long as I can, but I'm really tired because it's 2 a.m. <laughs> last one. <laughs> okay, if this is the last one, we pull three. Okay. Radioactive. This is already looking very good. <laughs> already post-apocalyptic. Temporarily radioactive forever. <laughs> very self-ironic title. Yeah. Temporarily radioactive forever. Workshop that fucking title. Okay, this works more as a concept rather than a title. Okay, shoot it. Okay, there's a guy that has gotten like some sort of radiation, mm -hmm. right? From working in a coffee factory for too long. <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> and this is a race movie to get like a medicine that will make him radioactive. Mm -hmm. Or m take away the radiation. So we'll be like Crank. So yeah, he's temporarily radioactive, but if it doesn't get the medicine, he'll be radioactive forever. Mm -hmm. So he's trying, but every medicine he tries, because there's multiple medicines, they all just fix it temporarily, hence the title. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, like... so, so it becomes a movie about, oh man, it becomes a movie about a poor man, person mm -hmm. who has to constantly get like medicine to keep re radiation that is killing him at bay, which he got from work, again, unethical, capitalists <laughs> don't care about the worker, and because of that, the entire story centers around him being uh, him having to go to more and more desperate measures, reflecting how much poor people have to struggle to just make it in the capitalistic system, especially in America where healthcare is fucked beyond belief. Imagine that, it goes from him desperately trying to pay his bills as well and maybe <laughs> having to sell his house becomes kind of like an addiction story. <laughs> it, be it becomes, this, this is perhaps the saddest thing we've come up with I have to cure my radiation, but the rent is due. It's just a guy trying to hold radiation at bay, and yeah. then the system fails him, and he gets more and more desperate until he ends up at the street dying of radiation poisoning. I love it. Make it. Make it.
I mean, it's royalty free, so you can fake it as much as you want. Uh, uh, do our ideas res respect? Yes. Thank you for watching. What's the name of the show? Making movies. The movie making show. Or making movies is better. Creative film. We're gonna drag a lot of people in with that. Mm. People are gonna be disappointed when it's not like us talking about movies, but talk, but telling people to get off their asses and make movies. <laughs> How dare you! The brain film. <laughs> the movie brain. <laughs> This is just us coming up with the idea. Like, <laughs> Film Forge? Film Forge. Film Forge. Film Forge. That's a cool name. Th thanks for watching. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Yeah,